Welcome to Moore's Operator Training Simulator Overview. Moore provides advanced training simulators that maximize your investment in technology by utilizing what you have already invested in the design and automation of your real plant and replicating that into a training system. The system is lifelike to ensure trainees get their hands dirty on virtually the real thing. It has an underlying plant engine that simulates real world conditions. When trainees make mistakes, the simulated plant reacts in a lifelike manner and will make his learning experience far more valuable. The system measures the trainee's performance by monitoring the time and the conditions that are achieved during the simulated exercises. You can measure your operators in an offline safe environment and compare results to achieve a high corporate standard. Let's take a closer look. It is important to remember that the purpose of plant simulator training is to provide your operators with the best possible platform to learn real-world operating principles and plant conditions. From safely starting up the plant to shutting it down through to running what-if scenarios and unit malfunctions to see how they react and bring the plant back into a safe operating mode without damaging the simulated plant. If your operators really understand the processes in your plant and the underlying causes, they will respond well in any given situation. From there you can also measure how to optimize plant production by letting your operators test various control strategies to maximize yields. Here we can see two of the main components of the training simulator. The plant simulation model on the left and on the right the plant automation system HMI. This HMI is an exact replica of what is used in the real plant. Our training simulators consist of a number of components. The training HMI, the control system, either on a PLC or a soft PLC, the plant model and the training scenario engine. As mentioned previously, we maximize your investment in automation and technology by reusing your existing programs. On the left is a hardware component overview. If the training simulator is on soft PLCs instead of actual PLCs, then as shown by the green circles, we configure and copy the actual system configuration, including the data, the function blocks and charts, as shown in the red circle, to the soft PLCs shown in the green circle. The copy process is quite straightforward as shown. On the right hand side is the plant hierarchy view. You can see the actual plant hierarchy from the live system. This is what we copy across to the soft PLCs when we build the simulator. One of the benefits of this method is that future plant modifications can be transferred to the simulator to ensure that trainees are always working on current plant systems. The simulator is built on the actual live project's hierarchy. As shown here, this simplifies the simulator project as the hierarchy has already been defined. To view this, let's open the actual project's network overview. What we see here is a view of the live plant's network before any simulator components are added. You can see here where the soft PLCs have been added to the network of the project. Once added, the project is compiled and downloaded to the soft PLCs. You can see in this screen where the data function blocks and charts have been added to the soft PLCs. Moving away from the automation side, let us now take a look at the simulator engine. The thermodynamic engine provides an accurate simulation of a live plant. This is the heart of the system and ensures that trainees are exposed to lifelike conditions when working on the simulator. The simulator engine is located on a separate server as it is fairly process intensive. The trainer interface is part of the simulation engine and from here the trainer runs the simulation exercises. Let's take a look at what an actual simulator looks like. We house all the computer components in a standard server panel. At the back of the panel 
we house the soft PLC's power supply and all the power articulation for the system. In the front of the panel, we can see the computer hardware. This is comprised of the training client stations. The servers where the DCS configuration for the soft PLCs are stored, and the simulation and trainer station that is located on the engineering workstation, or as we refer to it, the EWS. Located just above the servers is the switch where we connect the system together, and above that a brush panel to protect and allow easy access for the cables. We also make use of a KVM extender that allows trainee and trainer screens and keyboards to be situated in a convenient location away from the actual panel. We fully label each component and wire of the system according to our ISO policies to ensure that the system is accurately traceable. Here we see the soft PLCs. They have a fairly small footprint. The number of soft PLCs required is determined by the number of PLCs on the actual plant as we take the code from each plant PLC and replicate it on the soft PLC as previously shown. Let's take a look at the trainer station. We include a number of predefined training scenarios with the system. These are fairly easy to set up and configure. Clients are able and encouraged to add their own training exercises to the system as required. Let's take a look at how to set one up. You can either edit an existing training scenario in order to have a guideline to work from, or you can start one from scratch. The editor uses a text-based program language that is fairly easy to understand. Training scenarios can be as simple or as complex as needed. For complex scenarios, the system comes with a recorder, so you can manipulate the process as required and record it as you go. This is then saved as a training scenario that can be edited or run as is. To make sure trainees don't get too familiar with the training scenarios and exercises, the system also has the ability to inject malfunctions, both manually and randomly, on any of the equipment and at any time. Let's take a look at how to set up the different types of malfunctions. The type, conditions and durations for each malfunction can be configured and manipulated in the system. These are then saved and activated so that they can be used during the training scenarios as needed. A powerful feature of the system is that it is able to evaluate trainees based on predefined criteria. These are applied to all trainees so that scoring and evaluation is fair. Scoring can be set up per training scenario or it can also be set up for minor exercises. The evaluation system is then automatically started the moment a training scenario is run. During a training scenario, the trainer can monitor the student's progress and assist where needed. In this exercise, the trainee operating the plant on the right hand screen fails to open the correct valve as part of a sequence. This issue is reflected on the trainer's screen on the left hand side so that he can see what the problem is and instruct the student how to resolve the problem. Let's have a look at how to set up the scoring function. In a training scenario, the student is required to perform a set of plant sequences in order to achieve the desired production results or safely operate the plant within design boundaries. The sequence is based on process parameter values being achieved within a specific time period. The scoring function is set up to reflect best possible combinations of these parameters. In order to set up a scoreboard, you need to select the parameter and define the value that needs to be achieved within the sequence and within the design time designated target. As seen here, the system automatically converts the parameters into a percentage of the total score. The scoring scenario, which becomes the baseline for evaluating the students, is then saved. Once students have been through an evaluation, their scores are automatically determined from the scoring function 
and saved to files on the system. Reports can then be generated per student or per class and compared against each other. In summary, we saw that the simulator uses existing plant configurations, thus maximizing on your investment by reusing the actual automation project. We then saw how we could minimize costs by using soft PLCs and downloading actual plant configurations to more cost-effective hardware alternatives. The components are simply added to the existing automation network and hierarchy and then connected to the plant simulation engine. We then looked at an overview of an existing plant simulator and the components in the panel. From a trainer and system setup perspective, we looked at how to set up the training exercises and the scenarios. We had a look at how to keep the trainees on their toes by adding component fault injection and malfunctions. Finally, we looked at the evaluation functionality and how scoring is applied to the scenarios so that trainees' progress and improvement can be monitored. This concludes a brief overview of Moore's training simulator system.